It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. Hey guys, Tyler here. For this video, I'm gonna talk about the book called White Fragility. Now, before I start reviewing the book, I first wanna state that I'm not gonna talk about the entire book, obviously. I'm gonna talk about the highlights. So if you guys are curious about the entire book, I have a PDF in the description box down below. So without further hesitation, let us begin. Race scholars use the term white supremacy to describe a social, political, economic system a denomination based upon racial categories that benefit those defined and perceived as white. If, for example, we look at the racial breakdown of the people who control our institutions, we see telling numbers in 2016-2017. 10 richest Americans, 100% white, 7 of whom are among the 10 richest in the world. U.S. Congress, 90% white. U.S. Governors, 96% white. Top military advisors, 100% white. President and Vice President, 100% white. U.S. House Freedom Census, 99% white. Current U.S. Presidential Cabinet, 91% white. People who decide which TV shows we see, 93% white. People who decide which books we read, 90% white. People who decide which news is covered, 85% white. People who decide which music is produced, 95% white. People who directed the 100 top grossing films of all time worldwide, 95% white. Teachers, 82% white. Full-time college professors, 84% white. Owners of male professional football teams, 97% white. You know, when I read that for the first time, I immediately thought about this clip I found from Scotland. Most senior positions in Scotland are filled almost exclusively by those who are white. Take my portfolio alone. The Lord President, white. The Lord Justice Clark, white. Every High Court judge, white. The Lord Advocate, white. The Solicitor General, white. The Chief Constable, white. Every Deputy Chief Constable, white. Every Assistant Chief Constable, white. The Head of the Law Society, white. The Head of the Faculty of Advocates, white. Every Prison Governor, white. And not just Justice. The Chief Medical Officer, white. The Chief Nursing Officer, white. The Chief Veterinary Officer, white. The Chief Social Work Advisor, white. Almost every trade union in this country headed by people who are white. In the Scottish Government, every Director General is white. Every chair of every public body is white. The main reason why the majority of the people in power are white people in this country is because the majority population are white people. Let's take, for example, like, you know, Japan or China. Pretty much people in those countries are like, you know, majority Asian people, right? And so, therefore, any kind of minority in those countries will not get, like, high position of power because they're, like, the minority, right? And sometimes it's also personal decisions. Not every single person in the whole entire world want to have the same sort of positions like everybody else. So it comes down to personal decision, and it also comes down to demographics. That's not proof of white supremacy. Now, white supremacy is the belief that someone is superior to other person just because of their race, because they're white. And to me at least, that is not actually evidence of white supremacy, that's actually evidence of demographics and also personal decisions. Whiteness rests on a financial premise. The definition of whites as the norm or standard for human and people of color as a division of that norm. Whiteness is not acknowledged by white people and the white reference points is assumed to be universal and is imposed on everyone. White people find it very difficult to think about whiteness as a specific state of being that could have an impact on one's life and perceptions. We might think of whiteness as all the aspects of being white, aspects that go beyond mere physical differences and are related to the meaning and the material advantage of being defined as white in society. What is granted and how is granted based upon that meaning instead of the typical focus on how racism hurt people of color to examine whiteness to focus on how racism elevates white people. Maybe it's me, but this whole entire sentence was just word salad. I still have no idea 
what this whole entire author is saying. Because I cannot possibly imagine somebody just typing a melody, evilness of blackness, or the evilness of orientationalists, whatever, and saying this kind of stuff about a group of people. Because if it were to happen to say like blackness or orientational is whatever, I can only imagine that those kind of groups of people get really, really upset for generalizing them and say blackness or orientational is whatever. So, what makes you think this is no different than saying the exact same thing but for white people? Really, there's like no freaking difference right here. Whiteness as a position of status, being perceived as white, carry more than mere racial classification. It is a social and institutional status and identity with legal, political, economic, and social rights and privileges that are denied to others. So whiteness is more than a race of people. Being white is, in of itself is a political statement. People of color may also hold prejudices and discriminate against white people, but they lack the social and institutional power that transform their prejudice and discrimination into racism. The impact of their prejudice on whites is temporary and contextual. Whites hold the social and institutional positions in society to infuse about their racial and prejudice into laws, politics, practices, and norms of society in a way that people of color do not. A person of color may refuse to wait on me if I enter a shop, but a person of color cannot pass legislations that permits, prohibits me and everyone like me from buying a home in a certain neighborhood. In other words, if you're a minority, you obviously, obviously cannot be racist against white people because you see, you don't have position of power and therefore you must actually could be as bigoted as you want to. So yeah, I can't be racist, I'm black, Obviously, I don't have a position of power to be racist, so yeah, let's get racist against white people. Let's go by the logic of this author. If racism is defined as a person that has power, right? They need all the power in the world to be racist, right? What about those African countries that actually discriminate against white people? I guess by your definition, they are in fact racist too, right? Or what about, of course, like the Chinese people that discriminate against, of course, like those Muslims? I guess because they have power, they can also be racist too. So pretty much anybody, any country can be racist by your definition because different groups of people run countries, run governments. So yeah, people of color could be racist. And I really hate that term too. Like how is people of color like no different than colored people? I don't see no different. Many of us have been taught to believe that there are distinct biological and genetic differences between races. This biology accounts for visual differences such as skin color, hair texture, and eye shape. The idea of race as a biological construct makes it easy for us to believe that many of the divisions we see in society are natural, but race, like gender, is socially constructed. Ah, oh, this whole entire freaking like idea that gender and race is a social construct is just silly. Of course, you self-refuted your whole entire sentence by listing like the differences of the races. You don't need to be like a race realist to actually acknowledge those facts. As far as the idea that gender is like a social construct, that is not true. There are only two genders. Only two genders. For example, we know about the chromosomes like XX, XY, that's like male and female. We know for a fact that there's like different genitalia. We know that there's like female brains and male brains. So biologically, there's like two genders. So there's like no more than two genders like most people say. So no, it's not socially constructed. And to say that they're actually socially constructed is actually anti-science. My parents were not racist and they taught me not to be racist. Why you define racism as racial prejudices and individual acts or a system of racial inequality that benefit white people at the expense of people of color as anti-racist do, 
Your parents cannot have taught you not to be racist, and your parents cannot have been free from racism themselves. You heard it right here, folks. Even if you were taught not to be racist, you're still gonna be a racist. So yeah, every single last white person watching this video, repent your original sin right here. Racism is systemic, societal, institutional, omnipresent. They really are just cult like in this book. First, they stated that even if a person taught a white person not to be a racist, they're still gonna be a racist anyway. And of course, we're taught right now, just a second ago, that racism is just omnipresent, like everywhere at once. And so yeah, how is this not like Christianity in a sense? Like we have the original sin, we have God, so what's next? Like the devil, which is the white people? <laughs> it probably is like, you know, the devil's like the white people, so never mind. Consider colorblind ideology from a perspective of a person of color. An example I often share occur when I was co-leading a workshop with an African American man. A white participant said to him, I don't see race, I don't see you as black. My co-trainer response was, then how do you see racism? Colorblindness does not mean that a person does not literally see color. Like earlier in the book, you mentioned, of course, that race is a social construct and there's no biological differences and blah 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 but of course there are obviously biological differences and obviously when I see a person they're gonna look differently than me because people have differences obviously however when people say that they're colorblind what they mean is that they want to judge people based upon their individual actions and not because they're you know black or white or whatever race. So colorblindness is actually the idea of judging people's by their actions. Not because, you know, they're not seeing color, it's because of their actions. So there you have it folks, that's my personal reaction to this book. Apparently this book was super successful, that of course it was like number one, and also number two was also how to be anti-racist. And so, honestly, this whole entire book, from what I've seen so far, has been absolute racist garbage. Its whole entire premise was that colorblindness is bad, that apparently black people can't be racist unless they have power and stuff. And so, honestly, the concept that this book is actually promoting right now is very much racist. It would actually increase racial Tensions, so I do not recommend this book unless you're some sort of masochist like me or want to see like the perspective of social justice warriors. So, what do you guys think? Tell me in the comment section down below, and I'll see you guys next time. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. He's your only black friend, so he's your best black friend. I will <laughs> trade him for another black friend. Because black friends are rare, as you should be aware. He smiles like Richard Pryor, so just sit and stare. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler.